Recently, I finished reading Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies by Nick Bostrom, published in 2014. An astounding insight on the speed of AI development occurred while looking at a table in the book regarding AI game mastery. Many AI experts figured that the game of Go would not be mastered for another decade, citing the progress made up until that point. However, this prediction was shown to be ill-informed when the world champion of Go, Lee Sedol, was beaten by AlphaGo on the 9th of March 2016. What this shows is that the field of artificial general intelligence can have overnight breakthroughs, and the time left until artificial general intelligence arrives cannot be predicted in any certain manner. While this does not mean that an AGI is just around the corner, it does mean that preparations for the creation of one do need to begin sooner rather than later. Since I've already made two videos on this topic, you can see how close we are and whether an AGI will be friendly or not in these videos here. My purpose for this video is to talk more on the points highlighted in the book Superintelligence, namely about the control problem and what should be done about it. The AI control problem deals less about how to control an AI and more about how to make the goals of one align with humanity's values so that we as a species do not face an existential risk. However, to do this is much more challenging than one might expect. Steve Omohundro, an expert in the field of AI, outlined four basic drives most intelligences, including advanced AI systems, would follow to achieve any specified goals. These are self-preservation, since in order to achieve any of its goals, it must continue to exist in order to best achieve them. Efficiency, meaning that an AI system will want the maximum amount of use of all matter it acquires. The next is resource acquisitions, meaning that to achieve its goals, having the maximum amount of resources available to it will allow it to best achieve them. And finally, creativity, the ability to think of new ways to achieve any given goal. These basic drives mean that the potential for catastrophic risks, especially in the domain of resource acquisition, is possible with an AI programmed with any given goal and poorly specified ethics. Any AI that wishes to acquire resources, including the matter that makes up your body, would not do so out of malice, but out of necessity for furthering its original goal. While no rational programmer would create an AI like this on purpose, a superintelligence would understand the ultimate purpose of its goal better than any human and would disguise its intentions until it would be absolutely sure it could achieve it. In the book, Boston refers to this as the treacherous turn. So how can we solve the control problem? There are two main areas of focus in this regard, capability control and motivational selection methods. Capability control is controlling how much influence superintelligence is able to exert on its surroundings. In the book, four main methods are given. Boxing, which is when an AI is shut off from the outside world to the best of our abilities, or to place the AI in a simulation which it believes is the real world, so we can test it to see what we'll do in a given specified scenario. This method may seem smart, however, an AI may discover that it is boxed and will act friendly until we deem it safe to be released, at which point the treacherous turn occurs and its true intentions are shown when it is too late. Other capability control methods include tripwires, which would detect an attempted escape or certain actions and shut the AI down. However, an AI system may be able to detect and evade these tripwires given a high enough level of intelligence or predictive ability. Limiting the capabilities of the AI, such as less powerful hardware or inefficient software, is known as stunting. Stunting an AI seems unproductive, however, as competing countries attempting to create powerful AI systems could be careless in regards to this method, or the AI may eventually improve its own software and bypass this control method anyway. Finally, there are incentive methods to not act against the interests of humanity. Controlling the capabilities of the AI would only be a temporary solution, since even if these methods do successfully imprison the superintelligence, once another one is created, the control problem may need to be solved all over again. The more logical solution would be motivational selection methods. These involve aligning the goals of the AI with the values of humanity. Nick Bostrom outlines four main methods to controlling the motivations of AI, including direct specification, which is creating an extremely detailed goal, outlining all aspects of it and in great detail. However, as Asimov's free laws of robotics have proven, this method is unreliable due to unforeseen loopholes or exploits within the fine print of any given goal. Another option is domesticity, which is giving the AI unobtrusive, self-restrictive goals. The third method is augmentation, using an already known method of ethics, 
such as that of the human brain and using it as a base for superintelligence. However, the ethics of a human-based system may be flawed due to our nature, and we also do not know how the human brain would react to becoming infinitely more intelligent than any other human has ever been before. Finally, there is indirect normativity. This method is using indirect rules to specify goals, hence the name. Instead of coding an AI with specific goals, we could give it a general principle to follow that places our goals to be the same as the AI's. The most challenging aspect with most of these methods outlined above is how to specify human values. What makes humans as a species happy? And how do we code it? Since the first superintelligence we create will likely be the last we need to make, the first time we try to teach it human ethics will also be the only shot we get at it, so there can be no redo attempts. Ultimately, to solve the control problem will be a matter of time and research. Even in the time that this book was written, many more methods and insights into the value alignment problem have been suggested. But whether the time it takes to solve the control problem is 100 years or 5, the best time to start is now. There are some awesome organizations doing preliminary work on the topic, which I'll leave some links to in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching.